Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabriel from Dunn's Fan TV. Back after another video. Like the content the video. Go ahead and smash that like button. Like the content of this channel. Go ahead and hit subscribe, man. Listen, um, the Ravens was a very, very disappointing game. 13-3 to the Cleveland Browns. Fall to 9-5 on the season. 3-1 in the division. And let's start off with the John Harbaugh quote. Who's got it better than us? Uh, quite a few teams, actually, got, got, a, got it better than the Ravens. Okay. So, look, man. <laughs> let's talk about it, okay? Um, before, when the Ravens had disappointing losses, I didn't give any stand-up performance and stuff like that. But uh, I feel like that was wrong. So I am going to give a stand-up performer. I'm going to give it to two guys. Not saying they're the only two stand-up performers, but I'm just giving it to these two guys, okay? Um, I want to talk about J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards. Um, yeah, those are the main two guys, honestly, right? So J.K. Dobbins, 13 carries, 125 yards, 9.6 yards a carry. Uh, Gus Edwards, seven carries for 55 yards. Seven carries. Seven carries for 55 yards for 7.9 yards to carry. Pretty much eight yards to carry, okay? Now, those guys combined for uh, only 20 carries on this game. Tyler Huntley combined for 30 pass attempts, and there goes issue number one, all right? But before we get to the offense, let's talk about the defense real quick. The defense did enough for the Ravens to win this game, all right? Point blank period, very honestly. The defense played well enough for the Ravens to win this game. Were there some things that were um, missing? Of course, all right? Um, looked like Marcus Peters got hurt. Looked like Clayus Campbell got hurt. So hopefully those, those injuries aren't too serious. Uh, but pass rush was pretty good, especially early on in the game. Deshaun Watson didn't look extremely comfortable. He got more comfortable as the game went along. Amari Cooper had a pretty good game. Um, now, I will say this. Kyle Hamilton had an up and down game. But to me, this is pure misuse of Kyle Hamilton by the Baltimore Ravens, okay? Kyle Hamilton does good work in the slot, right? He does good work in the slot. The issue is when he has to play slot and then you man him up against wide receivers. Now, when Kyle Hamilton was coming out of the draft, there was nothing on his draft resume, his draft portfolio that said, man this guy up on wide receivers. Nothing in there. Tight ends, free safety, strong safety, cool. He could do all of that. Wide receivers... Show me how many safeties in the NFL can effectively line up on wide receivers and shut them down. It's not many, if any. That, that list can't be too long, okay? That's one. Uh, two, the reason he has to play this position is because the Ravens refused to get Chuck Clark off the field. Now, Chuck Clark did nothing wrong in this game that I'm saying, like, oh, take Chuck Clark off. He was terrible. What I'm saying is this. I would rather have Kyle Hamilton playing than Chuck Clark playing. I believe Kyle Hamilton is a better player. Period. Now, the Ravens won't take him off the field because if the Ravens wanted uh, Chuck Cluck off the field, they would have traded him in this offseason. The Ravens purposely decided not to move on for Chuck Clark. That was a decision that they made. All right? And Chuck Clark is the ultimate teammate, great professional, things like that. But there's a younger, more talented guy in the room that could do his job better. All right? Um, that's just that um, as far as Kyle Hamilton. But the defense was, defense was all right, man. You know, pressure. Uh, was in Deshaun Watson's face. He scrambled a couple times. They used Deshaun Watson a couple of zone reads and things like that. So I'm not really disappointed in the defense. Uh, the Browns missed like, what, two, three field goals. Um, they kept the Ravens in the game, honestly. You know, the Ravens, it, it, it could have been more, but um, the Ravens also kept themselves out of this game. So let's get to the other side of the ball, right? Let's talk about offense. Okay. Ravens fans, Ravens fans, please. I don't know. I don't have too many NDP kind of people on this channel, but do not take Lamar Jackson for granted. Okay, he's a generational talent. He covers up the flaws and cracks of this team so much that there was conspiracy about whether or not Tyler Huntley could do his job. He can't. He's not Lamar Jackson, and there's nothing wrong with Tyler Huntley not being Lamar Jackson. He's just not that guy. All right. We, this Browns game was the perfect example of when teams take away zero to eight yards on Tyler Huntley, he struggles. He gets happy feet. He starts moving around. This game, Tyler Huntley had maybe three, four times to throw away the ball. Instead, he took sacks. Instead, he took plays behind the line of scrimmage. There was one, zone read, right? Yes, a technically is his own read, so it was a run play. He's still behind the line of scrimmage. He can throw the ball away. Instead, he gets pushed out of bounds and loses five. Okay, played the, uh, one of the last shots at the end of the game. He, he, he should throw the ball away. Instead, he tries to reverse field. 
You're not Lamar Jackson. Play within yourself, Tyler Huntley. One, two, not there, scramble. The scramble not there, throw the ball away. That's your game. That's your game, okay? This Ravens offense was running the ball down the Browns' throat. I just told you that J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards combined for 20 carries, right? They combined for 20 carries and 100, 170 yards, 180 yards. On my quick math, I could be wrong about that. But anyway, a lot of yards. Damn near 200 yards on 20 carries, okay? That's what they combined for. And every time we get close, we start throwing the ball. All right, listen. People are going to talk about the wide receivers. And they should, okay? I'm, I'm not going to defend the wide receiver play. But this is going to lead me into my next point. The coaching and the scheme is so bad on this team offensively that I I don't know what the Ravens have on the other side of the ball. Do the Ravens need more talent at wide receiver? Yeah, I said it in the offseason. They, they, they could get another guy, there, but they're happy with, quote, unquote, who they have. So, cool. Roll with it, right? The issue is, Greg Roman's scheme has never, ever, ever valued the wide receiver position. Okay? Never. It's worked for offensive linemen, obviously. You know, they, they, they love to run block. It's worked for running backs. It's a great scheme for them. And it's worked for tight ends. We've seen, you know, tight ends get off in this offense. It happens, okay? The issue is the use of the personnel is not correct. I don't see enough Isaiah likely, right? Okay? I, I, I don't see um, this offense have anything that resembles... Um, crossing or confusion. It's something that makes the defense stink. It all looks pretty basic and simple for the defense, right? I watched the 49ers play the Seahawks. And Brock Purdy, right? Brock Purdy. If I had to rank Brock Purdy and Tyler Huntley, they're probably equal talent, right? I would say Tyler Huntley is probably maybe even better than Brock Purdy is, okay? I saw Brock Purdy operate this 49ers offense to damn near perfection have niggas running wide open, excuse me, have people running wide open, right? Uh, George Kittle, George Kittle, who is the, uh, well, I am say the best player on the office, but he's one of the guys on the office who was circled on game day, right? I need, we need to find George Kittle. Multiple times during that game, George Kittle's running wide open, right? The Ravens don't create these kind of mismatches for their own players, bro. They just don't do it. And a lot of that is down to the scheme. So now let's get into the coaching. Right? The Ravens had multiple times again where the play clock was an issue. So this isn't a Lamar Jackson thing. This is not even a Tyler Huntley thing. This is a Greg Roman thing. He's been doing this in San Francisco. If Greg Roman cannot be let go after this game, then obviously he's going to stay the whole season. He might even be back next year. Because I don't understand it. Okay? On the Ravens' most important play of the game, most important drive of the game, I believe it was third or fourth quarter, um, it was fourth and it was fourth and short, maybe like three, four, five, something around that range. The Ravens break the huddle with six seconds on the play clock. Now everybody has to run to the line of scrimmage. Pat Ricard looks confused, looking back to Tyler Huntley. Huntley said, Harry, get to the line. Huntley snaps the ball, quick rollout right. James Pochet drops the ball. That is what it is. He's got to catch that football. But let's talk about the coaching. Your players on the most important play of the game are not ready to be lined up because you cannot get the play call in fast enough. That's an issue. That's a coaching issue. Let's talk about the end of the half. The Ravens have three timeouts. Tyler Huntley runs up the middle. Instead of calling timeout right then, the Ravens let the play clock run. More time comes off the clock. All right, cool. That doesn't really hurt him, right? Bang. The Ravens have to uh, call a timeout when Isaiah likely, well, first of all, he gets out of bounds. Referee still calls him in bounds, okay? I don't know what's up with that. Ravens have to call a timeout. Okay, cool. The Ravens get a delay of game after a timeout. They get a delay of game after a timeout. That's, is, this is a professional football team. That's a laughable thing to do. To get a delay a game after a timeout. So, the Ravens lose this game. Um, like I said, they fall down to five. They fall to three and one in the division. Um, the Bengals play the Bucks tomorrow. Uh, Ravens got to hope that the you know the Bucks win that game, but the Bucks haven't been any good. Um, but I don't really care about hoping what other teams do. I want to talk about the Ravens. Okay, so. 
this offense, this coaching on offense is is, is pitiful. Um, and listen, the players aren't perfect, right? The players deserve some blame, okay? Like Demarcus Robinson. Every time Demarcus Robinson catches the ball, he runs backwards, and I don't understand it. Please stop doing that. Catch the ball, turn your shoulder, and get upfield. Stop running backwards. He fumbled to start the game, things like that. All right, James Poche dropped the pass. Devin DuVernay looks damn near uninterested in punt return, kick return, and playing offense. All right, Mark Andrews dropped the pass. That was in the well, way he didn't drop it. He, he let the ball get punched out of his hand because he didn't secure the catch tight enough. So listen, like I said, the offensive players are nowhere near perfect. Nowhere near perfect. The scheme does not help these guys at all. Greg Roman, the running game is going. This is this is one of the situations where we talk about Greg Roman has no situational awareness. The running game is going. This is what you do. You call run plays. So why every time the running game is getting going, all of a sudden, we want to throw the ball. Either it's an incomplete, a sack, or just a bad negative play. When, like I said, J.K. is averaging nine yards a carry. Gus Edwards is averaging eight yards a carry. J.K. Dobbins got 125 yards on 13 carries. The Ravens were killing the Browns with this play. Um, it was like an inside zone to the to the left. Morgan Moses, the right tackle, pulls over to the right side. They ran this play like five times. Because I just keep seeing Morgan Moses pulling. I just keep seeing him pulling. Every time they call this play, the Ravens got at least seven yards. Every time they call this play. Morgan Moses is just coming around cleaning linebackers up. But then we want to pass the ball. Okay. Um, listen, I'm not really mad at Tyler Huntley. He is who he is. He's a he's a limited quarterback who makes a limited offense that much more limited. It is what it is. You know, he can't. He's not effective at throwing the ball over 12 yards. That's not what he does. Um, it is what it is. The biggest takeaway for this game is is two of them. Okay. Um, first one and the most important one: the Ravens. And Ravens fans, do not take Lamar Jackson for granted. Don't do it. He's far too important of a player to take for granted. And secondly, the coaching needs to be better, or Greg Roman needs to be gone. Put those two together in the same one. But that's the end of this recap, man. It's your boy Gabriel. Just another fan TV. I'm out, man.